good evening. So, all students are different. So, all schools sh should be different too. Well, I will start with giving you a little bit of background information about my educational path. After primary school, I went into the classical education system here in Luxembourg. And um, after some years in, I began to have more and more struggle to keep up. And when I say struggle, um, 10 out of 60 points were the maximum I could achieve in every subject. So I had to take a decision. Either I drop out of school, um, I maybe join the army, or I would change the school. Well, I was suggested that I should change the school. And um, I've got the chance to join the Arie Métier here in Luxembourg, a school specialized in arts and crafts. In, in this school, we were encouraged to create new innovative things, and that was most important for me. Um, after that, I went studying industrial design in Switzerland. Um, and uh, from there, I came back to Luxembourg, and my first job was actually to design night vision systems for a Luxembourgish defense company. And uh, there I um, gained quite a lot of experience in uh, building high-tech equipment, equipment uh, that would last, equipment that would, could withstand uh, rough, rough environments. So, during my studies, um, something caught my uh, attention. We were using machines for prototyping where it seemed that you could build anything with them. 3D printers. So, what I do today? I run the largest 3D printing service in Luxembourg. Every day we create parts that help people and companies benefit of the nearly endless possibilities in 3D printing. You probably have heard of circular economy. It is essential that we create, use and reuse products without throwing them away as soon as they break. Um, 3D printing wasn't something I love, but in fact, it was perfect for merging two things together. So, first was having this nearly endless possibility when designing, and two was um, building things that last. So, let me give you two examples uh, of that. Um, when I was a child, my mom had this mixer for preparing my meals. And uh, after I grew up, this mixer went for a long sleep in one of our cupboards. And when my wife's sister had two years ago a baby, we went through all my baby stuff to see what we could reuse. And um, we found that mixer. And after 24 years um, of sleeping in that cupboard, I plugged it in, and uh, I was looking if it was st still working. Um, well, there was a grinding noise, but it was grinding its eternals. So I was op uh, opening it up. Turns out there was material fatigue on one of the gears. So I took that gear out, I uh, took it to, m to my office, gave it to one of my engineers, and the very next day I had a new set of 3D printed gears laying on my desk. So I installed that set of gears, and yes, it runs flawless until today. So this is an example uh, where I contributed to the circular economy, and I saved a little bit of money. But sometimes you can save a lot of money. In the early days of the company, I got a call from an 
quite angry person. Um, I'm not saying that he was yelling at the phone, but he had surely caps lock on when speaking. <laughs> um, and he said to me, well, I have these awnings around the house. Some of the awnings stopped working properly. So um, he said the company which provided these awnings were refusing to uh, replace any broken parts because the production has ended. So, yeah, he, was, he had 14 awnings around the house. I, I have never seen something like this. I mean, every window of his house had an awning. Um, so, this was cost, cost him a, few, uh, f a fortune to replace all the awnings, these 14 awnings. And um, we went there, 3D scanned the part, and the part was just the stopping mechanism that stopped working. Um, and the part was made out of non-resistant UV plastic. Um, we 3D scanned that part and reprinted it out of stainless steel. Uh, and now we can guarantee it will not dismantle itself uh, because of the UV. As we see here, um, all products have a certain lifespan. And if this lifespan comes to an end because of material fatigue uh, or uh, wrong usage, we are nowadays, we are quickly on replacing the product or the part. Now the question is, why do we not try to repair this product? Well, as a lot of us does not have the technical background um, or are active in the manufacturing industry, it is, for, for a lot of us, it is quite complicated to understand how products are working. And this is strengthened by the fact that um, for example, nowadays, a lot of technical features are not highlighted. Working parts in the product are covered. Um, or they used one-way clicking mechanisms instead of screws, so the product does not allow to be looked inside. Um, then, consumers are also facing the following issues. I mean, the company which sold or provided the product does not have a proper after sales service or repair service. A second, there are no uh, spare parts on the market to buy. And third, after a certain time, maybe the company or the manufacturer doesn't exist anymore. Um, so I have now three messages uh, today for you. Um, first, to the consumers, um, well, try to understand how the products are working. Um, think about the slogan, um, before printing this email, consider the environment. So let's transform that in, before throwing away that product, try to repair it. Um, I mean, if you are not capable yourself, there are a lot of professionals out there uh, who can help you. And 3D printing is one of the, the good ways to do that. So then I have um, a message also to the manufacturers. I mean, set, if possible, set up, a proper, um, set up a proper repair service for your customers. I mean, um, the last they want is the argument of you have to rebuy or you have to replace uh, the product by a newly one. And um, last, to all of us as parents, um, every child's skills get, get not unlocked by the same education system. So children are different, schools should be different too. Let, let the children find their way to become their best selves, like I found also my way to become my best self. Thank you.